Just from my block, all headshots. I ain't playing with you. South over Sosa. Shoot on sight. Play with me. Come through. And we was waiting for you on Twitter. We had the grips out and everything. Corey Hamlet, street name, C. Blaze, had a sad life. What I mean by sad, he's just a product of his environment. Growing up as a kid, he was basically an athlete. He was 6'1", 230 in high school. You already know he was a dominant beast. News articles say he caught a none of your touchdown. It was actually pretty great. With him being good at football, he would eventually get a scholarship. He got a scholarship to Lackawanna College, stayed there for a year, and got kicked out. He left the team because of the coaching issues, and since he was on the team no more, he couldn't pay for his tuition, so he went back home. This is a statement he said about joining the gang life. Even though he was a young gang member, the mayor even tried to help him out. In 2003, he would meet a councilman that would help him form a truce. C. Blaze, a great sheet crip, will form a truce with a former blood member that's locked up. Even with the truce, he was still a menace. The gang Great Street Crips were so big, they didn't even use real names. All they used was nicknames. So basically, if you see somebody, you know their personal name or government name. So there's no way you can snitch on them. You could just say a nickname. But who are they really gonna look for? From apartments to train stations to public housing, it was moving all their weight. With all the money coming in, they were using businesses, restaurants, and clothing stores to launder their money. So putting it like this, if they came to your store, they were giving you a cut how much they was making. So it's like you want to snitch on your business or just lay it on the low. Another member of the Great Street Crips, Terrell, aka Push, was speaking upon it. While the organization was going on, C. Blaze was basically untouchable. Meaning that he didn't do no business on the phone. The only thing he used was social media, which would be his downfall. What I mean by that is his record is clean. So he's never been arrested, accused, guilty, or anything. So in the cop's eyes, he's a good person. But everything started to boil down in 2013. See Blaze, he will put a hit out for his boys to go get somebody. This hit kind of went sideways. One, they got out they op, and two, someone got arrested. While the gang member was in prison, he would tell the cops, I'm a gangster, people are trying to get me. C Blaze would go meet another guy named Anderson at the mall to talk. After C Blaze got done with the meeting with Anderson, he would later find out Anderson would spread rumors on social media. With him spreading rumors, he would later find out he was informant to the police. And you know, once he found out he was informant, you know what happened later. The guy C. Blaze had due to hit, his name was Corey Watts, which would be a former informant. So what happened was, Corey Beige and three other people, they got in the car, he got a Mac 11 with a suppressor. He found Anderson and they hit the whip up. After the hit was done, come to find out, Anderson and his cousin, they was alive. So a drive through went wrong. But Corey Bates, he went to the hospital to get treatment on his bullet room and no one believed him. While locked up, the police said Corey Watts was the only one that's gonna cooperate with him. Watts told the police that C. Blaze made him off his own friend. The reason he did it was because C. Blaze made a direct order. And basically like this, if C. Blaze said do it, you had to do it. Because everyone was in fear that he was gonna off him if he didn't do his command. Plus, he the leader of everything too. So who else they gonna listen to? C. Blaze, he would give another order to push. He ordered him to knock off dude that set up the appointment for Anderson, the informant. What happened was, another gang member picked up the guy that set up the appointment, dropped him off at a location in the car, Terrell walked up in the car, and that's it. And on top of that, in 2015, he will also be doing a home invasion robbery. When breaking into the house, they used their firearms to hold the hostage, 
after they got the personal goods and the cash, one hostage was offed off. To be for real, for real, he'd be sending up his boys just for failure for all these committed crimes. This one they caught him lacking though. He liked to go on Instagram and post a lot of stuff. He got tattoos saying he a crib. He got a lot of expensive vehicles on his Instagram. And you gotta think, how we getting all of this money if you're not working? So they kept investigating the Instagram and the big indictment hit. Now federal authorities bust a drug gang setting up shop in New Jersey. 21 gang members were taken into custody today. Investigators say one of them plotted to kill an undercover FBI agent. Anything you want to say? The feds say these men are members of the Grape Street Crips. Being in the gang don't make you a criminal. The charges slapped against 50 gang members in custody far more serious. They include drug trafficking, murder. Quite simply put, we dismantled this organization from head to toe. And in this criminal complaint, a gang member named Corey Batts charged with arranging a hit as Batts obtained a surveillance photo of the FBI agent through pretrial discovery material that all inmates are entitled to on discs. He then allegedly tried to pass it along to a fellow gang member from prison. Unfortunately for him, the individual whose help he sought turned out to be an informant who was taping their conversations. Now let's ask the real question. Was it worth it? Go his whole life away. Keep in mind, he like late 30s, early 40s. He's an old man. What is sad though, he's never gonna see his people again. Everything he did in the past, the police wanted to lock him up for, they finally did it. Cases from the early 2000s had his name put on it. He gonna be in jail for a long time. To be honest, he had a bad leadership. He got into the gang life, a little that fast money. He was very successful at it. But you all know you all get caught at the end. I'm gonna be real with you. A lot of cats do that. After sports is done with, they hop in the streets, which is a stupid decision. But you all know, you could guide somebody, but if they don't want help, they gonna do what they wanna do, like in this case. So yes, he was successful. But he got caught because he wanted to be on Instagram posting stuff. The Chief Keith beef wasn't even necessary. He too old to be arguing with that kid. To all the innocent people, R.I.P. If you saved for the entire video, thank you for the support. We almost had 3K. I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.